happy Sunday morning, you guys, or whatever day or whatever time of day you happen to be watching this video. All I care about is the fact that you are here, you are watching this video, and we are going to have another awesome virtual Sunday school lesson together. I'm so excited to lead it. I'm so excited for you guys to be watching. So let's keep going with the Lord's Prayer and learning more and more about what the Lord's Prayer even means and what we're saying every Sunday. So we are going to keep talking about that today. Um, the pages that got sent out this morning, if you have today's coloring page, um, you will see that it looks like this. This got emailed out to everybody this morning. So if you have a printer at home, you can print it. If not, you can maybe just look at it on your computer. So today we are going to be focusing on the part of the Lord's Prayer that says, give us this day our daily bread. We're going to be talking about what is our daily bread? Is it just a chunk of bread I'm supposed to eat every day? I can go ahead and tell you the answer to that is no. So we're going to talk about what that line exactly means. What does it mean by give us this day our daily bread? What are we actually asking the Lord for when we say that? So we're going to talk about that. But before we talk about that, if you are watching this on a Sunday morning or any morning or really just any day at any time, it's always a good time to stretch and get some wiggles out. So I vote we do that together. So let's get our stretch on, just do some nice little stretches, move your arms, get your wiggles out, always bend down to touch your toes and then pop back up. Hey guys. <laughs> um, so I want you guys to kind of just wiggle, get some of your energy out. And while you're doing that, I just have a couple welcome questions for you to think about while we're stretching, while we're just warming up, while we're getting used to each other again, I am wondering who cooks the most in your family? So I'm wondering who cooks most of the meals you eat? So maybe your mom does a lot of the cooking. Maybe your dad is a fantastic cook. Maybe your grandparent is all about the family recipes and cooks a lot of meals for your family. I'm wondering who in your family does a lot of the cooking? Do you ever help your family members doing the cooking? Do you enjoy being in the kitchen? I personally am like pretty 50-50 about the kitchen. <laughs> I have to be in the mood to cook and then I love cooking. And if I'm not in the mood to cook, which is maybe like half the days out of the week, then then I get takeout because like those people were in the mood to cook. So I'm just gonna go buy food from them. So some of us have families that are very reliant on takeout and that is okay too. So while we are warming up, while we are getting used to each other, I just wanted you guys to think about who does all the cooking in your family? Um, what kind of foods do you enjoy them cooking? So I want you to think about that. If you have anybody in the room with you watching this video right now, this is where you can pause it and discuss that question, who does most of the cooking in your family? Or if you are watching it and it's just me and you, we just talked about it and we can keep talking. So if you need to pause the video and you wanna talk about that question with any of the people in the room with you, now is the time to pause it before we move on. If you don't need to pause the video and you wanna keep going, let's keep going. Let's move on and get into today's lesson. So like I said, on today's coloring poster, we are focusing on the line, give us this day our daily bread. So just like the opening of the Lord's Prayer and how it emphasized our loving God, remember how we talked about how important it is that it starts with our loving God instead of my loving God? So this part of the prayer, give us this day our daily bread, also reminds us that we are connected to each other. So as we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are asking that everybody receives daily bread. So the daily bread that Jesus names is a meaningful symbol. So to explain a little bit more about like why Jesus used symbols a lot. In Jesus' day, um, the Jewish people believed that there would be a huge banquet in the world to come where all people would be invited to this really big feast with God. Um, and there was this foundation of the Jewish people's hope when many people in Jesus' time were poor and starving and treated badly by their government. 
a lot of people had hope in the fact that one day they were going to have this amazing feast with God because here on earth they were starving and they were hungry. So they got a lot of hope from the idea of being fed and nourished by God. So praying for this kind of bread so when we say, give us this day our daily bread, are we really talking about, God, please give us a slice of bread every day? Not exactly. So when we are praying for the kind of bread that we're praying for in the Lord's Prayer, um, we are praying for God's dream and God's kingdom to come to earth right now. So we're saying, rather than having to wait, we are asking God to make this kind of banquet on earth happen right now. So when we say, Lord, give us this day our daily bread, we're essentially we're reminded that yes, God promises us everything we could need, so much abundance in heaven, but we're saying, Lord, we know people that are struggling and that are hungry right now, and, and we don't want to wait to get to heaven to have a big feast. We want to know that those people are fed and safe now, tonight, in their homes. So that's what we're praying for, and we're saying, give us our daily bread. We're saying we want to make sure ourselves and our families and all of the people around us are fed and cared for and loved. So it is important, y'all, to recognize the special and active job that God has for us in bringing daily bread to the world. So while the earth makes the grain, right? Grain grows from the earth. People need to take the grain out of the ground to make bread, right? So an early church leader named Augustine of Hippo said, without God, we cannot. Without us, God will not. So that is such an awesome reminder that God wants to partner with us in bringing God's kingdom to earth. So just like that example of the earth provides grain, right? Earth grows what is needed for bread to become a thing. But somebody needs to go and pick that grain and help it become bread. So like God provides everything we need. God is God. He's the most powerful. God can make anything happen but God wants to partner with us to help bring his kingdom to earth and guys that's a really cool job that God has trusted us with so God like I said wants to partner with us in bringing God's kingdom to earth so when we are praying for daily bread we are saying yes to God's invitation to a partnership so when we are saying give us this day our daily bread. It's like our way of saying, God, we are going to do our best to make your kingdom come true. And a part of your kingdom is making sure that people are fed and safe and happy and okay. So another thing is, have you ever noticed how often bread actually appears in the Bible? So there's a powerful miracle in the Gospels about Jesus feeding a multitude of people with bread, right? A lot of us know that story. In this story, as in many stories involving bread, there's a pattern. So Jesus takes the bread that is offered in the story where he feeds people with a small amount of bread. Um, Jesus takes the bread that is offered. He gives thanks to God as a form of blessing. He breaks the bread and he gives it to the people. Take, bless, break, give is the pattern. Take, bless, break, give. So in the miracle story with the multitude where Jesus is able to feed thousands of people with this one loaf of bread, the disciples tell Jesus to send the crowds away because it was time for dinner. The disciples were telling Jesus, we don't have enough food. There are a lot of people here send them home. We don't know what to do. But then Jesus turns it back on them, all right? Jesus stands up to them a little bit, to his friends, the disciples, and he says, you give them something to eat. God wants us to be active participants in blessing other people with what they need. Jesus knew he could have fed those thousands of people. He didn't need the disciples to help him. He could have done it. But he turned around and he looked at the disciples and he said, y'all help me feed these people. You feed them. He was reminding them, we are in this together. We partner to take care of people. 
So we see this same beautiful example at Jesus's last supper with his friends. He takes the bread, right? At the last supper, he took the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and then he gives it to his disciples. They then share the bread with each other, just like we do today when we celebrate communion at church. So God promises to bless our efforts and be with us as we do our part of bringing God's kingdom to earth. Later in the Gospels, Jesus calls himself the bread of life. So with this name for Jesus, we are reminded that Jesus feeds our hearts with the encouragement we need to keep going and to keep serving as we work for God's dream. So that was today's lesson. I hope you put on your best listening ears and listen to it. Um, but essentially, yeah, y'all, when we are saying, give us this day our daily bread, we're really, we're asking God, help us take care of each other. Help us make sure that all those empty bellies out there in the world, that we can maybe help fill them or that we can just be there to love other people well, or that we can just bring your kingdom. We can bring God's vision for creation, God's vision for the world. We can bring it to earth. And so when we say, give us this day, our daily bread, we are reminding ourselves that we are in this together to help each other. And we're in this together to help Jesus, who is our ultimate bread of life and our ultimate source of encouragement and hope and love and all good things. Um, so I just wanted to share that lesson with you guys today as we keep moving forward with the Lord's Prayer. So like I said, you have these coloring pages and I invite y'all to color this. So in this scene today, we see Jesus breaking the bread for all of these people around him. So what I invite you to do, if you have this coloring page, and even if you don't have the coloring page, guess what? You get to be creative and you get to draw your own scene of Jesus breaking the bread. I want you to still draw it. So if you have this coloring page though, and you are able to color it, you see a lot of these faces are blank. So what I think might be cool is if y'all try to maybe draw your own face on one of these people, and then maybe draw the faces of your family and some people you care about, and then maybe draw some faces you've never seen before. And I want y'all to do that as a reminder of Jesus blesses and loves and partners with me, and he blesses and loves and partners with my family and my friends and all of the people I care about. I want this to be a nice reminder for y'all of that we are in this together and we form a community that cares and loves for each other and for God and Jesus. So I just wanted to give you guys an opportunity to do that. I know today's lesson is a little shorter than usual, but guys, that's because today's Sunday service was also a special Sunday service. Our Christmas pageant aired today. So if you haven't already watched that, once you're done watching this, I want you to jump onto our YouTube channel and go watch today's Sunday service because I know a lot of you participated in the Christmas pageant and your pictures are gonna be in it and that is so exciting. So I know today's lesson was a little shorter, but I just wanna give you guys plenty of time to also go watch the Christmas pageant and get in the Christmas spirit because Christmas is next week and that is so exciting. <laughs> so. I hope you guys enjoyed continuing to learn about the Lord's Prayer with me. Next Sunday, we will not be posting a Sunday school video. I will actually be giving the sermon um, for our Holy Eucharist. So I invite you guys to watch that. Help me give a sermon. <laughs> um, so you guys are invited to watch that next Sunday. We will not be having Sunday school. So I will see you guys with our next part of the Lord's Prayer in the new year. I'll see y'all in 2021. So I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I hope you all have the most Merry Christmas and I hope you have the best holidays as always. If there's something I didn't explain quite well enough or I said something and it sparked a bunch of questions in your head, my phone number and my email are there for a reason. They are completely usable. If you have questions about anything, please reach out. I would love to hear from y'all. If you guys are coloring and drawing these pictures, send me pictures of those. I would love to see what you guys are working on. I want to be a part of it. 
So send me those too. And like I said, I just hope you all have the absolute best holiday. I hope you have so much fun with your families. I hope you stay safe and I hope you know how loved you are by St. Francis and how much all of you mean to me. And I am so thankful to have each and every one of you. And I just hope you all have the best Christmases because y'all deserve it. So I love y'all as always. I miss you so, so, so much. I can't wait to be back in person again someday. Um, so yeah, I love y'all. Have a wonderful Christmas. We'll see you in the new year. Make good choices. Be good for your families. And I'll see you in 2021. Bye guys. Have a great week.